I love designing, but I don't always have the time to create something from scratch every time that I want to create something. And what I mean by this is that sometimes I'm creating a book cover and there's a little element that I need, like a nice little flower, but I don't really want to go to Adobe Illustrator and create that entire flower when I'm already spending a lot of time focusing on that entire cover design. Well, I recently found this website that is absolutely incredible. It has so many digital assets and creative resources that you can use in any of your designs. There are Photoshop presets that you can use to help you with Photoshop. There are templates for just about anything you can think about. There are digital assets, like I said, that you can add to your other designs. The supply is literally endless and I'm absolutely in love with it. The site is called Creative Fabrica and today I'm going to walk you through all the amazing resources they have and different ways that they can be used, okay? I'm going to explain how they can be used for graphic designers and how publishers can use them with their low content books or their regular books. I'm going to explain how social media content creators can use these designs and assets. And one of the other things that's a little bit confusing as well, especially for first time users, is the difference between personal and commercial usage rights and also full POD licenses. So I'll also explain how that works and how you are allowed to use each of these digital assets in your own designs. So first of all, for graphic designers, on Creative Fabrica, you can use the assets that they have to add them to some of your own designs, or the designs that you're creating, you can sell on Creative Fabrica and make a little bit of an income that way. So if you already have designs that you're using for your own purposes, why not also upload them to Creative Fabrica and just earn a little bit of extra money with them? But let's take a look at some of the other assets that they have that are really useful for graphic designers. Let me just briefly go over some of the tools and resources that Creative Fabrica has. And then, of course, you can feel free to come here and browse some of these different categories in a little bit more depth. I did leave a link in the description, so you can go ahead and click on that and then come on over here and explore some of these tools. Now, one of my favorite resources for graphic design is right here, illustrations. And illustrations, again, can be used as a part of one of your designs. Um, if you do graphic design for products or t-shirts and you're creating a fall t-shirt style or product line, whatever you want to call it, or if you have like journal covers that you're creating and they're all unicorn themed, there's just so many different illustrations that you can use. And again, you're not having to do everything from scratch yourself. You can take little bits of these illustrations and add them to your designs as well. But as you can see, there are so many other resources here and you could use any or all of these as a graphic designer, depending on who you're working for, what you're doing, what products you're creating. They've got 3D SVG files, patterns, product mockups for when you do create your product, logos, illustrations, backgrounds, actions and presets for Photoshop, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, scene generators. Uh, web design kits. If you're a web designer, then the UX and UI kits are really helpful for that. And they've also got discounted graphics. Now the way that the pricing works with Creative Fabrica is you can get a subscription. And as you can see up here, they have a little promotion going on where you're just paying $9 per month for life, which is really awesome. That's a really great deal because for just $9 a month, you get unlimited access to all of these, which means that every single month you can download as many as you want. And again, you do need to pay attention to what licenses you are getting with that. You know, if you're getting a full POD license or a commercial license, but you just, you get access to tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of graphic resources. If you don't get a subscription, however, each of these items is priced separately. And you can see some of them are discounted right now. If we come over to illustrations again, you see this pack is $3, this one is $4. Most of them are very affordable, but again, if you're gonna be doing a lot of graphic design or you need lots and lots of design elements, then you might as well just pay the $9 and then you get unlimited access to all of these different tools and resources. Now, for those of you who are really into publishing through Amazon KDP or even Barnes & Noble or Etsy, 
then let's talk about some of the assets on Creative Fabrica that are helpful for you. What's really cool is I actually have an entire section dedicated to KDP interiors, which means that other creators or designers or formatters have created interiors like journal interiors or workbooks or coloring books, and they've uploaded those interiors to Creative Fabrica. And you're allowed to purchase those and use those. Again, you wanna make sure that you check the licensing requirements, which again, I will discuss later how that works but just make sure that you're using those assets the right way so that you don't get in trouble. Or even if you don't get in trouble, guys, it's really just about being honest and making sure that we're paying creators for what they've created. If we scroll down here to coloring books for kids, coloring books for adults, and KDP interiors, these tend to be the most useful for publishers. And these are usually low content book publishers. If you are looking to publish coloring books, but you don't wanna create the actual coloring pages, then you can come here to create a Fabrica, and then you can actually just take these coloring pages, put them together into a book, make a nice little cover for it, and then upload it to Amazon. You do want to be kind of careful. I have heard of people accidentally purchasing the wrong license and then they get their KDP account, account suspended, which is no bueno. So just make sure that you're doing it the right way. But as you can see, there are so many different designs here that are really fun to work with. There's unicorns, there's all these different animals, there's mandalas. KDP interiors is usually like journal interiors or workbooks that are pre-made for you. Again, you get the full POD license, make sure that's what you're getting. And then again, you can just upload these to Amazon. A lot of these are complete. So let's see if I can find one. Let's try clicking on this monthly planner here. So when you print it off, it should give you all the pages that you need for that planner. So literally what you're doing is just uploading this file to Amazon as the interior, and then you create your own cover. So it's really, really easy and simple to upload to KDP. There are all sorts of different interiors and themes. There's weight loss journals. This one, some of them, they actually will do research on different KDP niches for you. And that's, that's just helpful if you don't have access to a keyword research tool or you don't want to spend tons and tons of hours doing keyword research to find profitable niches for upcoming quarters. There's planners, agendas, positive affirmations, again, more coloring pages. So tons and tons and tons of different KDP interiors. For creating your cover designs, again, you can use the backgrounds, you can use some of the illustrations, and just play around with these different designs, especially if you're not into design much yourself and you kind of struggle with the cover design, then these are definitely some really helpful resources. Fonts as well can be really fun to play around with because you do get some new fonts that you don't normally find on Google or on Microsoft Word. And these can give you a really unique design for your cover or for coloring pages as well. So see something like this might look really nice on a coloring page. Now for content creators, and this includes bloggers, YouTubers, anybody creating social media posts on a regular basis, really any sort of content creation can seriously benefit from Creative Fabrica. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the assets they have for content creators. If we scroll down here and click on the UX and UI kits, these are great for web designers, but they also include things like Instagram templates, which is great for content creators, obviously, because these are going to be very cohesive. Uh, sometimes when I'm trying to work on an Instagram page, which I don't do very often because I don't love Instagram, YouTube is kind of my area, but it does become quickly overwhelming for me to try to create a whole bunch of posts, especially having them posted on a daily basis and making sure that they're all matching with colors and fonts and that they all feel cohesive and that they all kind of fit my brand. So these are really fun. It's, it's almost like little brand kits in a sense that you purchase. So see here, this is the 90s Instagram template. And when I click on it, then it shows me that I'm getting a whole bunch of these different Canva templates. So I can edit these obviously and change the words. I can move things around a little bit, but there's already a really nice cohesive design here for me. 
Now again, for anybody using Photoshop, this could include graphic designers or people who are doing a lot of photo editing, there are these really cool presets that are on Creative Fabrica. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Actions and presets are generally for Photoshop and it's basically like a filter if you want to think about it that way, but a little bit more high tech. <laughs> And they're really fun to play around with. Some of these are pretty expensive if you're buying them by themselves, but again, if you're getting a subscription, then these are usually included in that full subscription. And when you're creating covers or editing photos or whatever it is that you are doing with Photoshop, this can make your life a whole lot easier because then you're not having to adjust all the settings yourself, but you can get some really quick presets here that are really fun to play around with. Okay, so let's discuss the difference between a commercial license, a personal license, and a POD license. Now, personal use, if you purchase a product, a digital asset through Creative Fabrica and it says that it's just for personal use, then that means you shouldn't be using that design in anything that you're going to sell or make money off of, right? However, the difference between a commercial license, which most products and assets on Creative Fabrica come with, and a POD license is that with the commercial license, you need to tweak or modify or just include that asset as a part of a greater design. So for example, if you purchase a little digital designed flower and it only has commercial, commercial usage rights that come with it, then you can't take that flower, slap it on a t-shirt and sell a t-shirt. You can't do that. You can modify that flower, cut it up into little pieces and then spray it all over your t-shirt. You could do a whole bunch of those flowers all over the t-shirt and add some leaves in there. You could add that flower to part of a cover design or part of a portrait. So you can be using that in the assets that you're going to be selling, in the products that you're going to be selling, but you can't sell it by itself. However, if that item, that asset comes with a full POD license, POD means print on demand, then you can use it really however you want. If I open up any product, so this one, for example, is a self-care planner, It'll let you know what license you're getting when you purchase this product. This one says lifetime license for personal and commercial use, which means it does not include the full POD license. However, if you do need the full POD license, usually it's not that much more expensive. See, this one says only $1.17 for the full POD license, which basically means that you can take this and upload it as is to Amazon KDP, sell it as is. Does that make sense? However, you cannot just sell this file to somebody else. And let me go ahead and read through some of the rules here just so that you can understand a little bit of the difference between having the full POD license and just the regular commercial license. And these rules or instructions can be found anytime that you click on that full POD license option. Right here it says the full POD license is perpetual which means that you purchased it once and then you can use it as much as you want after that. The full POD license is especially created for print-on-demand users. You can take the assets and with no or minimal modifications create items that you sell on print-on-demand sites such as Redbubble, Amazon Merch, Teespring, etc. There is no limitation to the POD sites we support. Once you've completed the order, you will be able to download the digital files immediately and can start using them. So again, you can take this and you can turn it into a self-care planner, put a cover on it, upload it to Amazon KDP, and that is allowed. However, down here, what I was saying earlier is this limitation here. The one limitation that's there is that you are not allowed to share the digital font or design with other users. So you can only upload it to print on demand sites if the end user or customer is not able to retrieve the original file. Again, you cannot just sell this file. You can't just turn around and sell it on Creative Fabrica or Etsy or wherever it, wherever it is that you're selling it, right? If you are not purchasing a full POD license, you're getting a commercial license, which they also call a basic POD license, as you see here. 
It says on Creative Fabrica, all products automatically fall under the basic POD license. With the basic POD license, it's required that you only use elements to create a vastly different design. With full POD, you can use elements without modification. So if you've already taken a little bit of a look at Creative Fabrica, I want you to comment below and let me know what is your favorite feature of Creative Fabrica. There's literally so much. I have barely scratched the surface with my own usage of it. And I'm really excited to keep using some of the digital assets they have and experimenting with these designs. And as always, keep creating.